This is the Breville BES 900 XL espresso machine. And I'm going to walk through how to descale this machine yourself. The boilers, uh, particularly the steam boiler, the larger steam boiler, does not completely drain uh, when you're using the machine, which means once you fill this thing full of your uh, decalcifier, you have to then manually drain out that boiler to make sure that there's no decalcifier left in there that would you know, taint the, the taste of your, of your essentially your steam coming out and affect the taste of your milk and overall your drink. To do this, uh, you require a fair bit of patience and some time. Uh, not a lot of tools required. You do need a, a good descaler. I recommend a couple bottles of the Seiko. You'll need needle nose pliers. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, a T15 Torx screwdriver, and a couple pieces of particular hose that I'm going to get into in just a moment, so you can actually get into those, get into that boiler. I'll start by showing you how to access the machine. There's only six screws that hold the top and rear panels on. Start by pulling out your water reservoir. You have to take out the two torque screws. There's one here, one here. Then you've got to take out your two Phillips screws, one here and one there. After you've done that, nothing's going to fall out. There's a couple plastic clips here and here that's holding that piece in. So right now I don't have the screws in. You've got to loosen the front of the top. To do that, you've got to pull these two screws out. Those two screws can be accessed with a long screwdriver going in through this hole right here, as well as another hole on the other side of the, the brew head, just over there. I've already pulled those out, which allows me to pull the top off of this machine, you can see just how easily it comes off. Even once you pull the top off, this panel, as I mentioned, will not fall off yet because it's clipped in. You have to be extremely careful at this point. And that is because back here, you have a module on the top of this unit that is connected to the back uh, by, by a number of wires. But you do not want to pull up on the back of this machine at all. Once you get it up, you have to very carefully pivot it and set it off to the side so that you don't put any stress on those little wires. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna end up in a, with a big problem having to potentially resolder broken wires. So as you can see, I can wedge this up a little bit here. I'm not gonna pull it up very far. As I mentioned, those wires are back here. Once you pull that up, you can then pop off this rear panel. It does take some force. I'll try to do that with one hand here to show you. So you can see right in there, you can see it's all black, not a lot of light here. That, there's a plastic clip that's holding that in. There's another one on the other side, just midway down, right about there. So this is a, a two-hand job at this point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut out, I'll pull this back panel off, I'll pull the top off, pivot it, set it down inside the machine, and then I'll show you what we've got. Here's the machine with the rear panel and the top cover removed. In both cases, they're still attached. Rear panel is connected with this ground lug soldered on. No need to remove that. You've got lots of room to set this aside without having to desolder it. The top cover is where you're going to want to be very careful. These two harnesses are attached to the rear of the machine. You want to be very, very careful, particularly with this one, not to stress the connection to the circuit board for fear of, of breaking that off. The top cover, once you've got it in this position, will sit rather nicely just like that, supported on its own. I've done a lot of work on this machine with the top cover sitting like that and I haven't had an issue with it falling. Now that you've got into the machine, you can see you have the coffee boiler right here, sitting on top of the brew head, and you have your larger steam boiler over here. The descaling process begins like any other descaling process for a espresso machine. Fill up your water reservoir full of the solution that you use. Uh, of course, take out your filter softener here. And then you're going to want to cycle the solution in through the machine. So you fill up your, your coffee boiler and your steam boiler, uh, your brew boiler and steam boiler full of the solution. Uh, what I would recommend doing is draining these two boilers before you start. And that way you're ensuring that you've got the full concentration of the solution coming into the boilers, particularly the steam boiler. Because the water sits at the bottom, it's really hard to flush out. So you might always have a diluted solution in there. With the fact that you've got water sitting in the bottom so that one at the very least i would drain completely 
before you, uh, before you start the descaling process. And then of course you're going to have to drain them again, uh, at least drain the steam boiler. You can probably get away without draining, manually draining the, uh, the brew boiler. But honestly, once you're this far in, the process is not much harder just to manually drain them both. And that way you can be confident that you've got both of them very clean. And then after you have drained them both, you will want to flush fresh water through uh, a few times. I would run two or three of these reservoirs through. And what you can even do, if you're very careful, once you have access to these two boilers, I'm going to go through that in just a moment, you can flush them without having to run water from through the pumps, drawing it from the reservoir. What you can do is just inject the water yourself through one of the ports, uh, watch through the other ports, how it fills up to make sure you don't overfill it and squirt out water all over the machine. And then uh, siphon it back out. And you can repeat that process, which is what I did. I did about five times on both boilers. And, and the access points that you're gonna to wanna to use are the probe holes. Uh, those are the largest, gives you the most room to work. So I'm specifically talking about these three on the steam boiler, one, two, and three and these two on the brew boiler here and here. I'm gonna go over just how to get in there. Really quite straightforward. You gotta remove the lugs. I'm gonna use this one as an example. You know, you just pull this off. It's gonna be harder to pull off than that. I already loosened this one, but you can just pull it off with your fingers. I, I wouldn't get in there with pliers for that. You shouldn't have to. Now what you have to do is get this little clip out, this little U-clip that Rebel uses. You gotta pull that out. I'm gonna go over that right away with the pliers what you will require to pull that out and then you can just pull this probe straight up. So I'm going to grab my pliers here and show you how to pull that clip off. Right there. So I'm just going to grab it, wiggle this a little bit very gently and there we have it. Make sure you don't lose those clips. You can see it there. That's what they look like. There's different sizes. The uh, temperature probes and the host connections have different sizes, so you'll know they won't fit on each other. Now that you've got that removed, you can just gently pull your probe out of there. And this is what we're looking at. We have a probe with uh, an O-ring. That's the probe O-ring. All of the probes in this machine have that O-ring. Uh, I believe it's the same. Uh, one of them on my machine was an orange O-ring, but the same size. All the other ones were this blue o-ring, so I assume it was just a, a different stock of the same size o-ring. <coughs> it was in the same, it was in the this location, just as a FYI, if anyone else notices this. It's in the middle location here that I have that orange one. Uh, kind of odd, these all serve the same purpose. I don't know why that one would be any different than any of the others. I'm guessing it was just a different batch of gaskets, and it's in fact the same, serves the same purpose. Maybe a slightly different material because they changed stock or something like that during the production. All right, now that you've removed that, you want to repeat the process for all of these probe ports. This one, this one, pull out your two uh, brew head or brew boiler probes as well. Then you can do a couple things. You can see into your boiler. So we can't do it now because it's dark, but what you can do is shine a light in this one and then look through these holes and, and kind of work your way through the same process. Shine the light in here and see what you can see. You'll just see how scaled you are. And as you're cleaning it, you'll see uh, how clean you get it. In my case, I was able to see in fairly well and, and I got these boilers very, this steam boiler, very, very clean. This boiler wasn't nearly as bad uh, compared to what I started at. And at this point, this is crystal clean on the inside. It's nice and shiny, which is what I'd expect. There was a lot of white residue that I pulled out of there. All right, how to get in there and drain the boiler. You need two pieces of hose. This is the uh, fairly standard available at most hardware stores, quarter inch, potable water, high pressure uh, supply line used on fridges for the water, dispenser and ice maker and, and also some filters will use this as well if you've got a three-stage filter something like that in your in your house for your water this just happens to fit very nicely right in those probe holes the only problem is it fits snugly and it actually creates a full seal so you can't just put this in one of those and drain the boiler you're gonna have to break the vacuum so you, you automatically have to pull at least one more off but as I mentioned you're better off pulling all three off <coughs> The second piece of hose you're going to need is a much smaller hose. In this case, I, I found something that I could stick in here. And you'll see this is, this is pretty small. I'll just put my hand on here so you can see it relative to the probe. Comparable diameter to the probe, maybe just a little bit bigger. Hole is just big enough that I can get water through there easily when I suck it out. 
So how I go about draining these boilers, same process for both. You take your larger quarter inch hose and then put it through the hole. Push it all the way down to the bottom of the boiler and then siphon the water out. You're still going to have water left at the bottom because that doesn't get doesn't get you all the way to the bottom and it's it's a large hose, it's not very flexible. That's why you need the smaller hose that I then go in here with this guy. And then essentially you just work your way around the bottom of the boiler, sucking out as much water, uh, in this case solution, decalcifying solution, as you can. And what you can do is work through all three of these ports, kind of one at a time, work your way through until you've got all the water out that you can. <coughs> After you've done that, you will want to flush these boilers. You can flush them by following the same process. You know, putting your quarter inch hose in one and siphoning water back in from up above into the broilers. Fill them up a few times. Do that, I would probably do that. I did it five times each, I think. And then repeat the same process for draining them. That way you'll be very sure that you've got all your solution out. In the end, put in fresh water into your reservoir and run a whole reservoir of fresh water through the whole machine. That will make sure that all your tubing and, and all the lines on this are also uh, free of any of that uh, solution that you originally put in. Once you've done that, you can put the whole machine back together, uh, check for leaks, fire it up, test it, make sure you're, you're looking what happens, you're looking to see how it performs before you put the cover back on. And once you've got that far, no leaks, you're all good. And uh, you should have two very clean boilers uh, along with you know, your, uh, your valves here that allow for the water to be dispensed and the steam valve. Uh, and hopefully you've got a machine now that's good for another few years before you need to touch it with this descaling process again. I've got a couple other videos I'll mention. If there's interest or concern with the machine making loud noises or, or leaking or uh, not achieving your, your full brew pressure, the most common problem on this, on this machine is the solenoid valve, the black unit right here. Uh, and I'll do another video on, I'm not gonna go into that now, but I'll do another video on how to replace that. It's actually really quite simple. The other thing <coughs> that I've done is, a uh, video on how to pressure test your machine to confirm that your gauge is working and reading accurately. And as well in that same video, how to replace this gauge. Uh, really challenging task, something that I wouldn't recommend doing unless you absolutely have to. Uh, very tricky and, and a lot of opportunity to damage the machine when you uh, have to get in there to replace that valve. And then lastly, the uh, overpressure valve right here, it sets your, essentially sets your brew pressure Really easy to adjust. Uh, I won't do that in this video. Uh, probably cover that as well in the solenoid video just because there's a quick quick explanation on that. So if you're interested in those other elements of this unit, uh, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching and good luck with your attempt to descale your machine.